Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Elvin here. Today's topic, it's gonna rattle quite a few of, you know, people from all sorts of industry, but I need to get this off my chest because as you see the title, I believe, in my personal opinion, that these five things are pretty much scams that we have since normalized in our society, in our livelihood, in our day-to-day -day activity that it doesn't feel right as me who has been relatively frugal and intentional in my spending. And I realized that I actually think that these five things I'm going to talk about, it's not worth your while to spend money on if you think about it. So let's get my very first thing off my chest. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're, you know, a returning subscriber, I welcome you back. And again, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to rip the bandaid off. We're going to rip it off, you know, make it pain, painful and talk about food delivery apps. Food delivery apps, it's... We are not going to talk about the people that actually deliver your food. Those day-to-day -day unsung heroes in the pandemic, you no know, timing where we needed food uh, delivered to our table. These guys and gals were the ones, the heroes of our delivery service. And what I'm going against is how the app or these delivery, food delivery services, I'm specifically talking about food delivery services because it doesn't make sense in an economical standpoint to even run these apps in the first place. But hear me out. Um, in recent times, on Straits Times, if you have read this article that, you know, uh, the, oh, the delivery riders are having it bad because they have to push longer hours to, to, to work. There's, now, of course, it's rainy days and it's even worse because rainy days, people tend to not, you know, do deliveries, I guess. But, you know, they do enjoy longer hours. The delivery, the fees are getting smaller. I don't know why is that even the, the thing, you know, I thought it's supposed to be like fixed, you know. And then there are fewer orders uh, coming to them. That's why they actually have to endure longer hours. Some have even claimed they have to work 12-hour shifts, which is 12-hour shifts every day. It's unimaginable. I do my editing at my site, doing these YouTube videos, and really taking hours on end, and really I cannot take it. Uh, some can even hit 12 hours and I know that feeling of working, you know, and so but to them, it's even more tiring to work, you know, be out in the sun, in the rain, in the weather, you know, the elements of weather and then just be there for you to deliver your food. The issue I'm coming at is the margin that these apps are taking from the companies that are preparing your food. You know, during pandemic, there was an issue about, you know, uh, this some companies were complaining why were they charged this much, which is 30%. 30% margin of the food price that they are listed on the food. You know, the, the, the delivery apps is pretty insane. But of course, Grab did, you know, put it out because they are the biggest player in Singapore, you know, 56 I read it's like 56% of the whole market share is them, you know, serving the nation. 30% is where they will cut, you know, take a cut from and then it's distributed to all sorts of people and they only took take like 5% of the total amount. They say the order is, if they show you it's $18, you know, the restaurant keeps 70%, which is again, the, they take off 30% off. Then the delivery partner keeps 25%, which you know, relatively by that standard, it's pretty good, you know, to be very honest. And Grab keeps 5%, which is, they say it's only claim $1. The issue I'm having is that 30% is basically the whole margin of the entire food establishment that they run, that food joint or restaurant or center or whatever, you know, cafe or anything. And if you're wondering why almost none of the hawker centers actually are on the delivery app is precisely this point. How you can imagine your chicken rice will be priced at if, you know, 
they were on these delivery apps. It would be insane, the price. The price would be so bad. I mean, I can't imagine going to my hawker center and eating an $8 chicken rice. You know, where now I'm, you know, it's already so priced heavily now because of inflation and everything from $3.50 to $4 and God knows how much, you know, down the road. So what I'm driving at is if you can support your local establishments by going down, you know, it's not that hard going down to buy your food. I mean, of course, if you're at home or in your office, just walk. I, I believe there are places to go. In Singapore, it's relatively easy to buy food. Um, against weather and everything. We are so such a small little island that I, be, of course, <laughs> I, I saw a video, you know, of late, it's talking about Teng, tenga, tenga, tenga. This. That one I feel for you. Only got Kofu and a few fast food restaurants. But of course, when that develops further down the road, you will most likely have more food establishments. But again, I digress. If you are staying in Singapore, you should know where to buy your food. And of course, if you are staying in a high, you know, ended place, generally speaking, there's no food to be found. You have to buy, you know, or deliver for you have to drive out and buy that one. I feel for you, you have the money to spend because you're staying in such a, a big, big, you know, like condo or semi D forever. I know I've stayed in the semi D before. So I know what it's a stake to walk down all the way to buy the food. So for us, HDB dwellers, food technically is everywhere. I believe so. You know, even in Pongo or Senkang right now, it's relatively easier to buy your food downstairs. So just troop down and buy. So, because if you're buying from the DV apps, you know that your food price actually is much more expensive on the app itself versus where you go and buy from the same place that you're buying from, which is, they're not actually island-wide. It's close proximity, then they will actually deliver the food to you. So, I put it to you, help your fellow Singaporeans go down and buy. I've been doing that for ages. I've even used the Payla on Saturdays to buy, to even save that $3 with my wife's, you know, handphone is $6. So if you can gather all your headphones and then go and buy, you know, it could even save God knows how much dollars. So I put it to you, go down and buy your food. These food delivery apps charging the 30% margin is very insane. And I know it's to run a business. They are for profit business. And I understand but to me, it's been so normalized that everybody thinks that it's it's it's, it's a go-to if you're busy, you know, or you've got no time, or you just cannot get down because the weather is hot. I mean, the ladies, you 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 really think, oh. Anyway, that. Okay, I'd like to address this, that I have nothing against the riders who are making a living, you know, delivering the foods to you. As but what I said, you know, at the start of the video, you are my heroes, you know, back you know, back in pandemic days, even now delivering food when I'm sick, you know, when I'm tired, when I don't really want to, you know, go trip down and buy my food because of any circumstances other than being lazy, to be very honest. Nothing against you. I'm just against the apps that doesn't make any sense with the establishments. And the reason why you are also having your earnings drop, you know. You know, these few times is because A, a lot of people are not using it because of you know, financial constraints. And then B, a lot of establishments are not even using the apps to sell their food anymore. So that's a given. So do bear that in mind. I thank you so much again to all the delivery riders, you know. And uh, you do you. That's just my take on this matter. Comment down below if you think otherwise or you think otherwise. Thank you. That will be my first scam of the thing I am going to say. The second one would be credit card. Not specific credit cards, which if you actually were to go to Money Sense, which I, I'm actually on the website now, they, if you have no idea what the hell is credit cards and to you younger folks who don't understand credit card, credit card is a, it's a form of borrowing. It's not money. You don't pay using your credit card. You don't eat, you think it's paid and then you you just forgo payment later on. You still have to pay that payment down the road, which is 
month end, you know? So, and then of course, there's a credit limit. That credit limit is to help you don't spend more over it, you know? So, the issue is not owning so much credit cards. Yes, all the fine, oh my God, all my finance YouTubers would love you to sign up all the credit cards because they'll show you how to, you know, help with the mouse, with the cashback. They will teach you how to maximize the mouse and cashback and then put the this card together and put the, the card together and then put all the cards together and then make one very go around and then to earn as much mouse and cashbacks as this. And kudos to them. They did their homework. They are asking you to sign up through their links. And then you're making them uh, money by affiliate marketing, which you're going to support them, which is totally fine. Owning credit cards is not the issue. The credit card interest rate is the goddamn issue that I'm going to talk about. It's because it's in Singapore, it's 25%. 25% APR means the annual uh, rate that you have to pay uh, in the event that you, you know, don't pay off the full amount. So, and then you th might be thinking that if, okay, let, let's put it this way. If you unaware of credit cards, okay, if you are unaware of credit cards, credit cards, when you roll over your, you know, your, your debt, you know, the, the money that you owe, you have to pay an interest on it. That interest is compounding. That's pretty insane because it's not that's fixed. It's not that you owe this much and then the next month you owe this much. It compounds on the same 25%. That it's insane considering that you, if you put your money in a savings account or somewhere, you know, even in the S&P 500, it's only the annualized rate over 10 years, 20 years is only 10%. Unless of course, if, if you bought into maybe Palantir, it goes up to the moon and then that's about, that, that's a whole, investment thing altogether. I'm not going to go that route because this is not financial advice. What I'm telling you is if you're not understood credit cards, if you bought a big ticket item that you followed, you know, any of the finance tubers to finance YouTubers to, 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 to maximize your credit card, you know, your miles and then your cashbacks, and then you've gotten that much coming in, which is measly 5%, but you've not paid off your credit card bill. 25%. Even a normal person will understand that. 25 minus 5, you still owe 20%, even to that one. And it's not even that fixed. It's actually compounded. So I put it to you. Credit card interest is so normalized now that people don't understand it. They might owe money. I've seen so many you know, people that think that they are rich because they, 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 they buy on credit. Let's put it this way. I bought my iPhone 16 on a credit card. I intend to pay in full. Even putting it on credit card on installment did not make sense to me because in the event, I actually miss payment, which for an installment plan, you'll be surprised that you can actually miss payment. It's actually quite insane that as the months go by, because of human, where we think that you have more, you have the credit to, to buy on, you keep on buying more stuff, thinking you are rich. You are not rich. If you don't have the money set aside for it, you are basically doomed to be in debt. Consumer debt is the one cons debt that you should not be in. Credit card interest is the scam that many should realize. And yeah, you should be aware of this and do better, so to speak. The next one is a little bit personal to me. Storage units. Storage units are places where apparently you can store things that assess things that you have or as you know, as a personal person, person that, if, let's say you're moving house from a bigger unit to a smaller unit and then you don't have the means to store in your unit, smaller unit or you're waiting for your unit to even be available to your waiting for your key or HDB or anything, you know, your BTO, you, you will rent a storage unit. Businesses do that. It's technically normal on a temporary basis. The 
issue I have is when the storage units claim, I'm not even naming anyone. The storage units claim that is to help you with your stuff that you are keeping away from your loved ones or you have bought so much that you plan to keep even though your unit or your space, your space constrained by it, you don't have the little space to do it. Let me put it to you. I am a toy collector. I'm a figurine toy, toy, toy collector. I've collected when my parents' house was very big. Like I mentioned to you, it was a semi D. How big is it? My room was huge. As the financial crisis hit, we downsized to a HDB flat. I think it was a five room flat. It was still big. What my parents did was they threw away most of my toys. That was another story altogether. I did hate them for a while. I come to terms with it. Why? Because they didn't knew better. And it got me thinking that if I were to put in a storage unit, which my parents would have done in, we have paid the renter and we have incurred more debt because it, we will have not seen the unit and then we will just be paying off money, excess cash, excess you know, expenses that we didn't need to. And then God knows what I will do down the road. As I move to my now unit in my four room flat with my wife, I've actually sold down all my stuff because I knew that paying for a storage unit did not make sense at all. But now the storage units are claiming that to provide you some, you know, storage that uh, they, they, I don't know how to put it to it. They, they give it, they call it a lifestyle self storage space that a lot of people would like, they like to keep, they like to keep stuff. The ownership is something that many Singaporeans love to do. I myself included, look at, look at my toys around. But what I don't understand is you claim ownership, but you're putting it in a place where you're paying renter for. That's not claiming ownership, right? I mean, you can comment down below or comment on any of the things that I just said, you know, the food delivery apps, credit card interest, you know, uh, storage units. You can name anything. I put it to you, you don't need the stuff if you, don't have the space for it. As simple as that. You don't have the space to put it in your house. Then don't. It's going to be bad for you because down the road, you will lose interest in it. That's one. I know because I've collected toys for 20 years. 20 years. I've lost interest in so many items. So many items that I've lost interest that it baffles the mind that I actually told... I. I, in my other video, which you can click over here, I've talked about selling down my toys and I actually got money back. But I can actually see the toys. Then I sell it down. If you don't see the toys, you're not going to think about it. You're going to pay rental on it. Why are you paying rental on things that you uh, lost or interest on it? That's something that you have to come to terms with it. And then, of course, I saw that one month's booking for this kind of storage unit, lifestyle storage unit, is close to $300, 270, 276, and it's those small units, those very small 38 square foot units. Then they, of course they, they claim that it's going to turn for you. They're going to make it look nice. And then there's a display cabinet and everything, but you're not going to go there. You're never going to go there. You're going to go home. You're going to be so tired. You're going to come back home and so tired. You're not going to go there and be like me, you know, look at my toys over here. That's the honest goddamn truth. So I put you, this is a scam. The storage units are providing a service. That's not the scam. The scam is you buying into it because you think that you need it. So that's the scam. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is gambling. Gambling, lottery, betting, you know, those kinds, you know, 4D, Toto, Big Sweep. When I was young, I was quite oblivious to the fact that every weekend, you know, my mom would ask me to go and buy. Back then, when my dad was still around, he would go and buy. Then when my dad is not around anymore, my mom entrusted me to buy when we, we moved to 
the HDB. You know, semi D, I didn't know better, you know. Again, my mom, my dad was around. Then I'll go, you know, my I I stayed back in the day, I stayed very near Tampanese Mart. There's a Singapore pools right in the corner. Then I'll buy diligently every weekend I will buy. Then of course my mom stopped buying. A lady, my aunt who's staying with her still buys a bit. It's a habit. It's a very poor habit that many middle class Singaporeans or even those that are not doing well are still buying to it thinking that there's hope if you buy you know, there's no hope that you don't buy yo my yo si wang mei my mi si wang that mentality is going to be bad for you because what I know now that in Singapore if you're unaware we are the second you know largest biggest gamblers in the entire world per adult basis the losses is also the highest losses huh that means you put money and you didn't win anything the, that's the losses is the highest but of course it's fallen but we're still number two number one is australia which for the life of me i don't know why but we are number two and it's staggering to to see that even adding tourists and visitors gambling losses account here it doesn't really move that much of a needle because average adult residing is like 1189 it dropped to 1451 oh, but with that adding you know is what what is it again 1964 so the tourists and visitors account for only like 500 per adult huh? so basically me sitting here doing nothing I'm still losing money, you know, at 1,451 because someone out there has been betting way more than me. I'm betting zero, he's betting like for me. And then we average down is 1,451. When I say betting, it can be gambling, it can be betting on lottery. You know, it's 50-50 for what I get it. That's an astounding rate. And I put it to you, when was the last time if you knew someone who actually won any money? You know, across the time that he's actually betted. Yeah, there are the outliers. They will show those that are actually, you know, earn, you know, the millions through the home power lucky draw or whatever. But that that is only when you open your eyes to it and then you will feel the urge to, to bet on it because you think you'll be the one. You're never going to be the one, to be very honest. So, I have no idea why the Singapore government says that we should curb spending, you know, on gambling. And yet, we locals are the second highest in the entire world betting on and gambling. And yet, Singapore, the government, with the tote board, opens up all these Singapore pools and making them look so nice, attracting the millions in Singapore to bet with them. And of course, with our two casinos, not one, two casinos, which is the life of me, I don't know why we have two, to, you know, instill this gambling habit that I think is a bloody scam that we should take account for yourself. Again, not the government's fault. They planted the seed, they planted the, the casinos. But it's you guys that went to gamble. So, I'll put it to you, it is a definite scam. You shouldn't even do it. Take the money, go and invest in something. You have that money, go and save. The interest rate is still high. You earn interest on it. I know it's a little bit but it's better than losing to the government who I don't God knows where is the money going to later down the road. You know, we have five mayors in Singapore, you know. <laughs> That's for God knows Singapore, small little country, we have five mayors. Anyway, I digress. Again, this is not uh, any finance advice. I'm just telling you that to me, it's a bloody scam. Think about it. You know, go and comment down below about it. I don't really care much about it because I don't do it, you know, on my own account anymore. And I've saved much more right now. So yeah, I would urge you to think about it.
The last one, which, as I mentioned earlier, I've bought an iPhone 16. I bought it all right. I bought the mid one, the, the, the smallest iPhone 16, and then it's the uh, upgraded a bit. So it's about $1,449. Uh, it's the, that's the listing price. But I paid in full. And I know I needed to buy it because my iPhone 11 already broke and I needed to upgrade it because already it was, it's 11 to 16, it's 25 years. You can click on this video. I monetize my video, my channel uh, because of my iPhone 11. I'm still keeping it for sentimental val value. And of course, nobody's going to buy it, to be very honest. The iPhone 16, I paid in full. But my SIM card is under Simba. It's only $10. I've used it for so goddamn long. I started talking about Simba way, way back. I don't know how many years back. I'm still using the same number. I actually downgraded my mom's number to the $10 because we were actually paying off uh, her my mom's iPhone 13 in installment, which again, I think is a bloody scam. You shouldn't even put anything on installment. To be very honest, if you can't afford it, it means you can't afford it. And then if you think you should pay it on installment, you should pay everything in full. The telecommunication scene is so weird that right now we even have an $8 one, a no frills $8 uh, plan right now. So I put it to you, those companies that are asking you to buy the new iPhone, buy the new Huawei, but, but buy the new Samsung, the phone, and then put it on installment, or even better, buying into the plan, fixing you, locking you in two years, and then paying it off. I believe you actually are better off paying the phone in full, and then buying those cheap SIM, SIM card plans, and your, it's cheaper. I know it's a few hundred dollars cheaper. You might think that I need the new iPhone. You don't need the new iPhone. If you have an existing iPhone, you can jolly well keep it because I've kept my iPhone 11 all the way to this day. You have to look at my iPhone crack screen to know that I needed to change it because it's going to get worse and worse and it gets it got worse down the road. So you don't need to upgrade if you don't need to. And if you really need to upgrade, save the money, you know, budget it out. Do what is necessary to put aside the money. And then once you're ready to buy it, then go for it. I have the money to buy it. That's why I'm telling you that it's not worth putting it on a credit card. It's not worth putting it on installment. That's one. Buying into a cheap, SIM card plan, to me, it's the same. One can argue that the speed is different, the call is different. I don't know, man. I've been using Simba for so long. And then with now, there's so many MVNO plans from Singtel, you know, Heya plan, the, I don't know, what's the other plan? Zim, Zimo? Zim, Zim, Zim plan, Zim Mobile. You know, all these are also $10. Go for them. They are also under the big tele telecom, uh, telecommunication companies anyway. So if you're worried about Simba, you know, the, the network is no good. Go for this few. I urge you that you're better off paying that big ticket item off first. Be frugal and pay whatever subscription that the bare minimum is. And you will be thankful for yourself later. I'll do a bonus one for you. Insurance. No, not the health insurance or life insurance or terminal life insurance. Those, those are highly regulated. I'm not going to go into that, you know, before the government comes after me, you know, again, it's highly regulated in Singapore. What I'm referring to is consumer insurance or extended warranties. You know, those categories fall together. It's a total scam. I'll be very frank with you. Those don't make any sense to me. If you're buying into an insurance to cover your consuming product, like for instance, I have friends that buy a flip phone from Samsung. They bought an insurance knowing that it will break on them. 
or you know the 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 thing will the, the flipping part will just crack or something you know it's insane that they is is so normalized that i don't understand it you know even for me my apple iphone i never bought any of the apple care at all not once i bought so many iphones i never needed to use it even i broke my iphone 11 to that screen you know state I never even used it because it's still working. And I've used it for a few years, you know, from 11 to 16. I've actually used it for so long. And then, of course, another thing that would be like my gaming consoles. I've actually not once bought any extended warranty on them. Extended warranties are a fluke, uh, a scam. You should probably not even think about it. And coming from me who has bought so many gaming consoles, a Mega Drive to the PlayStation to the Sega Saturn to the PlayStation 2, 3, 4, and now the 5. My Nintendo Switch. I bought all of them. I not even used any or bought any warranty at all for them. So take it from me to you. Extended warranties are a total scam. You don't need it. You never needed it. So yeah, that will be my bonus, you know, scam for you for this video. So anyway. This is me just ranting. <laughs> Comment down below if you have any queries, any comments, or you think that these scams are not scams. You know, these scams are just me just being me, just not thinking straight. You can comment down below. I'm open to criticisms. I'm open to any comments. And for that, I do thank you for being here this long. It's again a 30 minute video. I, 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 I don't know why I'm doing all these 30 minute videos because I just got things that I just to get off my chest because at this rate, there's a lot of things that I'm going to talk about. Anyway, um, like, you know, if you think this video is good, like dislike if you want to, uh, uh, you know, go ahead. At least you are interacting with me. Uh, comment if you have some comment and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care everyone. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.